This video is a more detailed look at SAP's IBP Sales and Operation Planning application brought to you by SEM Connections. In the last video we were talking about inventory target and projections and in today's video we're going to be doing material and capacity planning which was another level of calculations that were done in the background when we ran that supply heuristic. And then just to refresh everyone's memory about the data example, we have one supplier supplying three components and he or she supplies them equally to plant 101 and plant 102. Uh, each of those plants has a resource one and two with a sub-assembly and they ship out uh, two products, product one and product two. The uh, two DCs are supplied equally by both plants, DC-101 and DC-102, and although they don't manufacture anything, they make two products, product one and product two, and supply them to customers. This next slide is essentially a breakdown of the bill of materials and the recipes. What essentially this diagram is saying is that I have uh, component one of 400 units, and component two of 800 units and they go through resource one and it produces 200 units of a subassembly. That subassembly with 100 units of component three goes through resource two and produces 10 units of product one. That resource two is also shared with product two and it's saying that 1,000 units of component one and 10 units of component three go through resource two and produce 100 units of product two. And then as far as the actual load, you can see to make one unit of subassembly requires five hours. And then for product one at the top, it requires three hours to go through resource two for making one unit of product one. And then to make one unit of product two, it takes seven hours through resource number two. So this query is showing the product and the location as attributes and then several key figures we've already seen for the inventory on hand quantity, the actual quantity of the inventory. The inventory target is essentially their safety stock. Their dependent customer demand quantity is blank, but if they were actually shipping directly to customers, this value would actually be populated. The demand quantity of 12,350 is the demand that it's getting from the DCs and the net demand is what we've spoken of before, 22,600. The receipts quantity is what they'll actually be receiving from production and the supply quantity is that which they're essentially supplying to the market in the form of dependent demand. As we've spoken before, there's no real transports receipts for this particular product at this location because they're manufacturing product to not buying it. And then finally, the production receipts is that which they plan to make for that period. So this query is a little bit more complicated because it's showing multiple levels, but the attributes are location, product, and resource. And then the key figures are the production receipts quantity and the capacity load. Now production receipts we've spoken of before, 2500 for product one, that's what they plan on making for that period. And then if you go down, you'll see the capacity load is 7,500 on resource two, because that's the resource that actually makes that product. And it's 7,500 because it was three times, it took three hours to make one product, one unit of, of uh, product one. And if you can continue down, you'll see for product two, there was 22,600, this was 22,600. And the uh, resource two capacity load was 158,200 because that's seven x seven hours for one unit. And then the subassembly was 50,000. We got that number because it took 20 subassemblies into that goes into one unit of product one. And then the capacity load is a uh, five x, so it took five hours for the capacity load. So I went back in and added two additional key figures, the consensus demand plan quantity and the utilization percentage, which was essentially the load divided by the capacity of the resource. The one thing I wanted to show everyone was the flexibility of the tool and its, and its performance. Again, this is for a small data set, so I don't want to mislead anyone, but I just wanted to see, for example, if I took the consensus demand and blew it up tenfold to 100,000, and then I ran the heuristic you can see that the supply heuristic is going to run 
and it's going to recalculate all those values. Not only not only just the utilization percentage uh, and the production receipts quantity, but also the net demand and the projected inventory and all that value. And as you can see, it's actually a pretty fast turnaround time to change that stuff around. So very quick, very easy. So this final query is showing the component material usage. As you can see, components one, two, and three. Um, so for that, I actually added transport receipts quantity to this query, even though it's for plant 101, which I've said before shouldn't have values. It does for something that's purchased, and since com those components come from a supplier. And then in this case, I'm doing the same thing I did in the, next, in the last step, which is I am changing the consensus demand and rerunning the heuristic and seeing what the values are actually going to be. And you're going to see it's come back pretty quick. And I think the power of this, obviously, is, again, communication to your vendors, seeing what the impact demand has on critical components, and, and just the competitive advantage. I think normally this would take weeks of someone trying to put something together for just a what-if question. So to summarize this section on material and capacity planning, you saw a couple things. For the resourcing, you saw the capacity load by material and the utilization, as well as the immediate recalculation. I was using consensus demand, but it could be in anything. It could be a price, it could be a resource constraint, whatever. Um, the other thing you saw were the components calculations, so essentially MRP, and that, although I didn't show the financial impact, I think from prior videos you can piece together how that cost would be attached, and then as well the immediate recalculation for those components if, say, a comp particular component went up in price or m major price change, what impact that has on profit. And then for finance, although I didn't go into it too much, you saw the product cost and the resources. You can see how that could be done. Component price changes. And then again, the immediate recalculation um, on a variable and seeing what the impact is. Roll up into your profit. components into this particular tool. I, I think